GCSE further mathematics. It's time to cook my stationary points. Something that's new to GCSE students. This is a big question. It's actually a non-calculated question as well. So it says, given that f of x is x power 4 minus 2x cubed, power 4 meaning a quartic, find the coordinates of the stationary points and determine their nature. And with something like this, actually, you could very easily sketch it as well. Maybe I'll do a sketch for you guys if you're lucky at the end, which wouldn't be part of the question, but I think it's good for you guys to know. Now, the first thing is stationary points. What does that mean? Let me give you guys a brief history on what we even mean by a stationary point. So say I had a curve like this. Why do we call certain points stationary points? Now, the easiest way to think of this is, say you had a ball, and I put the ball here, okay? Imagine there's a slide. Where would that ball go? The ball would slide down here. It would be stationary down there, okay? So it would be stationary down there. It would be stationary down here. Where else would it be stationary? Now, if you guys did this perfectly, you would be able to place the ball here and here so that it does not move. However, one small tap and it goes down to here. If we're doing physics, um, you would label this as an unstable stationary point, and this would be a stable stationary point, but obviously that's not, it's not even in A-levels, okay? Now, what's special about all of these points, stationary points? Well, if you were to draw tangents here, they would all be flat, meaning their gradients would be zero. Horizontal means zero gradient, and in this case, we say f dash x is zero. The gradient function is equal to zero at whatever these x values are, okay? So, the first thing we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to differentiate it and make it equal to zero. Differentiating this, very simple, lucky for you guys, differentiation in GCSE further maths and year 12 is super easy, it gets a bit mad in year 13. So we differentiate this, we bring down the power, knock one off the power, because it's a power function, so we get 4x cubed, and then bring down the power minus 6, yeah, because you're going to multiply it when you bring it down, so minus 6x squared, make it equal to 0. Now we make that equal to 0, we're going to solve that, I'm going to factorize out x squared, but also I'm going to divide through by 2. So I'm going to do that first, so I get 2x cubed minus 3x squared is 0, factorize out x squared, I'm going to get 2x minus 3 is 0, okay? So, it looks like we're going to have two stationary points, okay? One and two. So we're going to get x is 0, and x is, so when you make that equal 0, you're going to move the 3 over and divide by 2, okay? Now, we're going to have to classify uh, these stationary points. Um, or if you want, you can work out what the y value is. It does say find the coordinates of the stationary points. So if I sub in x is 0, here you're just going to get 0 minus 0, that's just 0. For this one, remember this is a non-calculator. We're going to plug into here, we're going to do the power 4. 3 to the power 4 is 81 over 2 to the power 4, which is 16 minus two lots of x cubed. So minus two lots of uh, this cubed. Um, three cubed is 27, two cubed, ocho. Now I'm actually not gonna cancel that because we're gonna bring this all into one fraction and the common denominator would be 16 anyway. So in fact, I'd rather this denominator, whoops, be 16 and just times that by two. Uh, 27 times by 4 is 108, yeah. Okay, I think 54, yeah, okay, cool. So 108 uh, minus 81, brev. We do all this complicated maths, but do you know what? Sometimes you need to uh, do a little bit of column method in that. Okay, so we get this. Now we obviously need to classify these points. I mean, so I need to do with the x values anyway. 
Now to classify, we need the second derivative. The second derivative here, what some students do is they differentiate this. That's the simplified version. We're going to differentiate this. We just do the same thing. We bring down the 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Then x squared. Okay. Minus 6 times 2, 12. And then we have x. Now, we're going to sub in x is 0. And this is very interesting because when you sub in 0, you're going to get 12 times 0 squared minus 12 times 0, which is 0. Now, what does that mean? It means we don't actually know if this is a minimum, maximum, or an inflection point, okay? Now, there's a difference, and you can't just say because it's zero, it's going to be an inflection point. You'd get it wrong, okay? In fact, it could be anything, yeah? And if you want to check that really quickly, do y equals x to the power of 4. x to the power of 4 looks like this, a bit like a quadratic. I've drawn that really badly, but... Its turning point there is clearly a minimum point, but its second derivative at that turning point would be zero, okay? So, in order to determine which one it is, we need to test the gradient on either side of that turning point, and we'll see uh, what it gives us. So, at x is zero, I'm going to test minus one and one, okay? Now, the reason for that, so here's my turning point, x is zero. Just pick some easy numbers on either side. Now, you have to make sure that it does not pass this next turning point. Now, 3 over 2 is over here, right? So since that's not involved, we're okay. Yeah, so don't make that mistake. You couldn't use 2, for example. Again, you'd get that wrong. So we know the gradient here is 0. What happens when we sub in minus 1? Remember, we're subbing it into here. So f dash of minus 1. We get minus 1 cubed, which is minus 1, times 4, minus 4. Minus 1 squared is 1, we just get minus 6, so you get minus 10, less than 0. So, the gradient here is negative, it's downward sloping, okay, it's downward sloping. It might look something like this, okay. Now let's test out 1. When we sub in 1, you just get 4 minus 6, which is minus 2, it's still negative. So over here, it's negative. Aha, uh -huh, look, they're the same sign, it's going to be an inflection point, okay? So, therefore, it's an inflection at, uh, what was the coordinate, 0, 0. Alright, um, I might just do it down here, ah, uh, no, we'll do it here. So, we have an inflection point there. What about at 3 over 2? So we're going to sub into here, right? So f dash dash at 3 over 2. 12 times 3 over 2 squared. When you square that, you get 9 over 4. Minus 12 times 3 over 2. Work this out. Remember, this is still a non-calculator. 4 goes into 12 3 times, times 9 is 27 minus uh, 6 times 318, which is 9, bigger than 0, okay? If the second derivative is positive, that indicates a minimum point. Now, why is that? Very simple. All this is saying, the second derivative is measuring how the gradients are changing over time, okay? Now, as we go along this curve, what's happening to the gradients? Negative, negative, zero, positive, positive, positive. They're increasing. Yeah, the gradients are increasing. And that is what this is telling us. The second derivative is positive, meaning they're increasing. And that's why it's a minimum. Therefore, it's a minimum at, what is it, 3 over 2. And uh, what was the y value? Minus 27 over 16. Okay, now this is the end of the question, but as a bonus, guys, let's sketch it, yeah? So how would we sketch this? To sketch it, we'd want to find out the roots, but what's cool about this is when x is 0, y is 0, all right? But what we might want to do is factorize. If we factorize this, we get x cubed, 
and then you'll get x minus 2. If you make that equal 0, you're going to get x is 0 and x is 2. So cross the x-axis here and here. Now remember here it's an inflection point, all right? But I also know it's a positive quartic, okay? Now you have to know whether a positive quartic comes from down or up, yeah? Or up, down, and down, up. Well, remember I drew the quartic here. It's like a quadratic, so it's always going to start from the top if it's, if it's a positive one. So here, it's flat. It's an inflection point, right? Then we also had 3 over 2 minus 27 over 6, uh, 16, sorry, here. And that is a minimum point. So I always do that bit first. And then we just complete the graph. So it's going to come down, go flat, down, back up. And that is what this quartic looks like. And this is all the information up until here is just seven marks. But I think it's cool for you guys to see what the graph looks like as well. And that's it. So I've kind of explained how all these stationary points work. Why is f dash equal to zero finding the stationary point, the kind of background behind that, and the classifications of those stationary points. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in my next further maths video. Nice.